Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this Red Game and Tedicon video, we're going to be discussing and analysing tech news, which, as usual, has popped up over the past 24 or so hours. We're going to start things out with Intel, because there is a fascinating development concerning Intel and Samsung. As you're probably aware, Intel will be entering the discrete GPU market, and they're slated to do so in 2020 with their XE architecture. I have done a detailed analysis of Generation 11 and also Intel's XE GPUs. You can find that linked in the video description. But Intel XE is a different architecture to Generation 11. It basically builds on the changes that Intel are making with Gen 11. But from leaks and also Intel's own murmurings, it would appear that they are targeting uh, market leadership, i.e. products such as NVIDIA's HPC offerings or even the GeForce line of cards. Now, you might also be aware that Samsung have made an important announcement of their own over the past 24 or so hours, and that is that they are getting very close to volume production for their 5NM EUV process. It's going to be uh, the first half of 2020 that they start ramping up that production. Now, this ties together now. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of leading you both down separate paths and we're gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna meet in the middle. And that is that Raja Kodori has just visited Samsung. In fact, he posted about it on his own Twitter account. Now, there's a couple of ways you can take this. One is it's just a coinky dink, right? You're just like visiting the company. Maybe your friend Bob works there, or maybe you're just doing it to kind of discuss things in general of potential partnerships in the future for completely unrelated products. The other possibility is that Raja Kodori is thinking to himself, hmm, 5NM EUV, uh, and this stops our own manufacturing capabilities needing to be stressed and you know it also gives us the jump on potentially our rivals the rumors just so that we're all clear here of course is that amd will be releasing narve we're going to be discussing more navi stuff in just a moment actually because we have some leaks concerning that uh and that is going to be on the 10nm process with narve 10 this year and there's going to be a bigger chip which is going to launch let's say the first half of 2020 we also have the next gen gpu from uh, amd which uh the actual one code name we do know is arctorus uh, and so i'm just calling it arctorus just because it sounds better than next gen but arctorus itself is not the code name of the architecture it's for one chip inside the larger you know it's a bit like saying uh, a really simple example but it's a bit like saying polaris 10. Uh, but anyway uh, so we have AMD on that side, then we have NVIDIA, which of course currently have Turing, which is built on the 12NM FFN process, which is basically a refinement of the 16NM process. NVIDIA are all but expected to jump on 7NM, which we don't exactly know what their plans are for 7NM. Um, it could be the Ampere, which is the rumoured architecture name for their successor for Turing, is going to be not much more than let's say a Turing refresh, or it could be an entirely new architecture. Another possibility, of course, is that uh, Ampere is going to be simply for HPC usage, or I say simply, but HPC usage, and GeForce folks could get a Turing refresh, or they could get something entirely different, and maybe architectures are going to start diverging a little bit. What we've heard about uh, Intel's XE GPUs, and once again, I'd encourage you to check out our analysis, which is linked in the video description, is that they're going to be built using chiplets, between two to four chiplets, for Intel's XE lineup. So it's going to be really interesting to see exactly how all of this comes together. And with the confirmation that AMD are going to be powering the next generation of consoles, the PlayStation 5, and well, it's not 100% confirmed with Microsoft, but it's all but confirmed, let's face it. I suspect that the uh, computing market is going to change radically over the next couple of years. So what about the Narve information? Well, in regards to this, we have a supposed leak from the website 4channel, which is basically like 4chan, but more of a, you know, work safe variant, I suppose. Now, of course, we don't know whether this user really does work for AMD, but what they claim is that they are providing us a certain insight into some of the fundamental changes that they are making for the Narve architecture. The first of which is we see one megabyte of additional level 2 cache compared to Polaris, so that brings us up to three megabytes total. Level 1 has also seen a radical increase in size as well. We're looking at 32 kilobytes compared to 16 kilobytes. 
the top end SKU for Narve 10 is being reported to operate at 410 gigabytes per second of memory bandwidth and it's using a 256 bit bus which is a radical increase of the 256 gigabytes per second that we see on the RX 590. From what we understand, Narve is almost certainly using GDDR6 because David Wang at AMD have confirmed that Narve is going to be using either GDDR6 or HBM2. This means that the GDDR6 memory of Polaris, assuming that these figures are accurate, is likely clocked at around 13 GBPS, which is, you know, very doable. None of this information conflicts to what we've heard in the past. In fact, you might recall that when I put out that video regarding Narve 20 featuring ray tracing, the very same leaker also hinted to me that the architecture for Narve was radically more efficient compared to the older GCN or NCU, I guess, if we're discussing Vega architecture from AMD. So one of the ways to make it more efficient, of course, is to just increase the amount of cash. It's going to be really interesting if all of this uh, Narve information turns out to be accurate, and I more mean the performance side of things as well. Um, I personally believe that if it is going to be RTX 2080 levels of performance, even if the pricing information uh, turns out to be incorrect that we've heard before, that it's going to be around 250 300 US dollars, and instead AMD, let's say, target even oh, I don't know, 400 US dollars or 500 US dollars even for RTX 2080 levels of performance, it's going to be a real kick in the shin to NVIDIA, and it's going to bring hopefully some competition back into the market. If you mosey on over to the beta upcoming changes for HW Info, you could see that there is indeed enhanced support for Ice Lake SP as well as Snow Ridge. There are a couple of other changes as well. For example, added reporting and monitoring of overclocking ratio limits on Intel CPUs and some changes for MSI's MEG X3299 uh, creation as well as other X299 series but of course the highlight here is the enhanced uh, Ice Lake SP and Snow Ridge support. And finally we're going to close out the video with a report from the Nakai concerning Nintendo's Switch system. And this details that there will be indeed a lighter variant of the Switch handheld console, although contrary to earlier reports, this version will indeed be dockable, so you will be able to plug it somehow or another into your television. And there's also mention of a more powerful variant of the Switch hardware that is going to be upcoming, so let's go through the quote. This is featured on usgamer.net, which has provided the translation thanks to a chap by the name of Tom James. Beyond the smaller budget-focused model lies the development of an overhauled next-generation model intended to replace the one currently available. Nintendo is believed to be experimenting on a number of different things for the device, including usability, improved image rendering, and changes to the operating system, among other things. One development source contends, however, that it still remains unclear at this stage who at the company will end up taking the lead on conceptual development for the new console, end quote. So the light version of the system is supposed to be releasing at fall this year, but there's no uh, release information even slightly yet of the more powerful upgraded variant. We can probably assume NVIDIA are still going to be tasked to produce the chip, and obviously there are multiple Tegra variants which are more powerful than the uh, SOC that we see inside of the current Switch hardware. But it's going to be really interesting to see what Nintendo do. If I had to guess, one of the things they're probably waiting and experimenting on is what developers feel the next generation systems from both Sony and Microsoft are capable of. After all, while the Switch is not as powerful as, let's say, even the base Xbox One, there are games which look pretty darn impressive on the system. We've got Doom, we've got Wolfenstein, we've got even the new Mortal Kombat which is coming out. And so that ability to play games on the go is obviously one of the reasons that your people are buying the Switch uh, hardware. So for them to include that on, let's just call it the Switch Pro, is going to be important. So we do need that ability for also Nintendo need that ability for developers to be able to easily port code, or at least as easy as possible port code over from the PS5 or slash Xbox, whatever it's going to be called. From the wording though, it's quite interesting because it seems like it's almost a replacement for the current Switch models. So essentially, 
there might be a time when you are able to buy a game which will only run on this, let's call it the Switch 2.0 and not be backwards compatible. But though, if you do have a game like, let's say, Super Mario Odyssey on your current Switch, most likely it will uh, run on the upgraded model. With all of that said, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Normal stuff if you did, like, share, comment, and subscribe. You can also find us down below on both Patreon as well as Amazon affiliate links if you so desire. And you can also find us on social medias. With all of that said, take care of yourselves. Bye for now.